that was fun. Like Drake, when he does his press conference, he comes in and has like soliloquy the first three minutes or whatever. He kind of gives his, I don't have that. I just take a couple of questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> questions, anyone? Uh, Coach, it seems like Nate Noel and uh, Mark Scare will both kind of get in some involvement in uh, the pre snap motion and then also in the receiving game. Uh, just kind of what do you think of both their abilities in those aspects? Yeah. We got uh, some work to do, but they have the skill set that can fit what we're going to do, which we're going to flex those guys out and throw them the football. And uh, all you have to do is just catch check downs, really. That's all Cody did. He didn't catch many vertical passes down the field. So um, we're encouraged by the spring that they had. You guys didn't see as much today, as obviously, as we've seen, but we're encouraged by what we saw from those two. We have one more. We have one more. Since I was a head coach, I should have overruled Kirby, who overruled me. Because I said, let's do it. He said, we're too close. But uh, we have a few more. <laughs> They're a little easier to call when there's not much really on the line, I would think. Who are some of the guys that stood out to you today? Um, just for our team or both teams? Both teams. Um, Caleb. Flag, I think today may have been the seventh or eighth interception of the spring. I mean, like, who does that? He has great instincts. Uh, from an offensive perspective, great instincts, and he's got great ball skills. Because for some, for some DBs, there will be seven PBUs he just because he couldn't catch it. But he has great ball skills. We're encouraged there. But I, I think, you know, uh, uh, Josh was the MVP. Is that right? Yep. Caleb and Josh. Oh, Caleb. Oh, yeah. So Josh has had a great spring. Um, you know, Josh Manning is from Kansas City. Um, he's an explosive athlete, but he hadn't really played a lot of receiver. And his development is, is, is uh, in progress, but he's had a great spring. He'll play w very well for us here in the future. So we were encouraged about Josh. What are some things that Josh does well that you really seen his growth um, over the past year now and during the fall and an extended role in the offense? You know, Josh just shows up to work every day. He, he's a competitor. He's a, a lunch pail type guy. You know, he, he, he's not flashy. He just consistently makes plays, and, and uh, he just shows up every single day. He's, you know, some guys get injured and miss a couple of days of practice. Not Josh. He's been here. And what Coach Drink does on Mondays during the season um, is that we have like a little walkthrough, and then the young guys would, would practice. The freshmen that were essentially red shirt type type freshmen, and Josh began to flourish there. Uh, he began to make plays for us, and he just progressed. You know, he was a. 25 foot long jumper in in, um, in uh, high school. He has a state record, so he has some explosiveness. Had lots of, lots of ability. Um, he's just uh, I told him today, he, he's gonna be a good football player for us for a long time. And having such a deep receiver room and a lot of athletes you mentioned like Josh, um, how do you kind of you're the only one ball to feed, only one pass, and kind of per play? How do you kind of continue to um, extend the ball down to the whole room? Yeah, uh, you know Kirby has done a really good job of spreading it around, and uh, that that makes us tough to tough to defend. But you know we need depth, and Josh adds quality depth. And you know we were real fortunate last year as a team. We our offensive line was intact the whole season. We played the whole season with one quarterback, one tailback. How often does that happen? So we have to build depth in in uh, in those instances when you know the first line guys can't play. Just uh, yesterday, Brady said that one of his most anticipated parts of the spring game was getting to uh, pass the ball around some of the younger parts of the receiving core, not yeah. just Manning. But also Marquise Johnson and Brett Northley. Uh, can we see a lot of what that's going to look like today? Well, maybe not today, but we saw it all spring. You know, today the, the teams are intermixed and, and we haven't really played together as much, so the continuity isn't there. So it, it won't look as good as it has looked in the spring. But we've gotten the ball around a lot. You know, Luther had an injury, had a little ankle, so he missed, you know, some practices there. And coach was able to move Mookie inside, and Mookie Cooper flourished inside, so now he's very versatile. So we got a lot of weapons, and uh, Herbie Moore knows how to use them. Coach, after the first level pass to Marquise, uh, he was jumping around happily, and then after the game, he got one, and he ran around the goal sideline uh, very happily, too. Um, how important is his, not just Marquise, the player going to be for you all in the fall, but Marquise, the person as well? Yeah, Marquise was open all day, too. He was wide open. You know, they're always open, so Marquise is always open, but he was, and we couldn't get him the ball a couple of times. But 
you know, I, I said before, Mar Marquise is going to be single cover next year because of uh, the other receivers that we have, and he'll exploit. He's, you know, he's probably the fastest player in college football. He ran a 10, 1, 8, 100 meters and a 20.5, 200 meters uh, as a senior in high school. So, um, you know, they got to play two over the top of him. Or if they man him, then, you know, you'll see him going deep. Coach, just from your perspective from today, we, we saw a lot of disruption up front from the defensive line on both sides. Just kind of what, what are your thoughts on kind of how all well those guys played? You know, a lot of it's going to look really good because the offensive lines aren't intact. You know, but when you put um, our five offensive linemen up, you know, those guys, John, yeah, Johnny Walker on one side, Joe Moore on the other side, and then, you know, Darius, Darius, what's Darius' last name? Uh, yeah, Darius Smith. You know, we were like, who is this guy? You know, he's making plays all spring. So uh, that, that's a position where when defenses are really, really good, you get pressure from those defensive ends and you don't have to blitz. So that, that's what we're going to need. We're deep there. I know uh, we may add some players, a couple more pieces on defense. Coach Drinker talked about it, a couple more on offense. We'll see how it goes. But um, we like our football team as it stands right now in, in, in March. Peter does a phenomenal job with, with those with the receivers. And there are a lot of moving parts and it's really fast. And you usually see a lot of growth, you know, in the second year, like Luther had, you know, from first year to second year. He moved from outside to inside and had a lot of growth. You know, guys just there's a lot of defense, so you gotta navigate the coverage and, and be on the page with the quarterback. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do and Coach Drink will talk about how important the next phase of our training is from now until June. Our our players will throw and catch a lot. Um, on their own, we'll have OTAs toward the end, uh, the beginning of the summer. But we, we just scratched the surface of where we need to be a, a, as a team. But our receiver room is as deep as, as I've ever seen. And the beauty of it is, is, is they're as unselfish as I've ever seen. That really starts at the top with Theo, Theo Weiss, and Luther Burton. They're very unselfish football players that they want to win first. What can you take from, I know there wasn't a tackle to the ground, but what can you take to, from uh, the way that Nate Marcus ran the ball? Are there certain things? Uh, I just we have to look at the totality of the spring to, to really evaluate everyone. So it's just not from today. I know most people only see today, but we've seen um, the entire month. I think today is practice 12. So we've seen 12 practices. And, you know, as coaches, we just say we, we have a lot of work to do to get where we, we need to be. So um, that's the mentality that we'll have moving forward. Uh, we have a couple more practices next week, and then we have a lot of work to do. I think Coach... Uh, Coach Drink will tell you he he brought the uh, he unveiled the uh, Cotton Bowl championship ring, and his, but his message to the team was what Tom Brady said about which was his uh, most uh, popular ring of all. He said, "No, it's the next one." So that's our mentality. Like, yeah, this is good. It, it's the next one. So our, our sights are set on next season, and we know it's a process. And spring ball is the first step, or well, second step in that process after you know winter conditioning. How do you think Logan Riker? Well, um, you know, Coach Jones could answer it better, but, but um, Coach Jones does a great job with those guys up front. Uh, there's a lot of offense and a lot of defense, so for, for a young player like Logan, you know, there'll be a point where it'll just slow down for him and it kind of clicks for him, off in, for him, so he can see things, things slow down. But right now, things are moving pretty fast for him, but he's got Connor Tolleson playing next to him who can tell him. Uh, Connor is one of the smartest players on our football team. He can tell him what to do, but Logan's going to be a great football player for us at some point. But it, it, it's really hard. That's one of the hardest positions to play is offensive line early because things happen so fast up front. You know, guy standing in front of you, and you know he's gone. So, and he's he's right on your nose. So, um, but Logan's going to be. He's a he's probably uh, a Bruce Feldman will probably have him on his um, freaks list at some point. I mean, he's 365 pounds or so, and he ran 19 miles per hour. This uh, this off season, so when it all clicks, it'll be a good football player for us. Um, they they've had a really good, really good transition, and it's easier for them to transition because they played a lot of football. Uh, so we don't have any any starters yet. 
they're still com uh, competing for, for that job, but you're going to see Marcus Carroll and Nate Noel early in the season. I'm pretty good at kind of, you know, that's kind of a politically correct head coach <laughs> answer. Right. Anything else, Chris Luke? Thank, Thank you, guys. You guys.